Father God, first of all, I want to thank you, Lord, this morning for you giving us the opportunity to come into this perfect God one more time. We want to thank you, God, for last night's sleep as you laid some of yourself in the state of bed, Father, and how you take an angel by our bedside that you could have this four feet of ours. We want to thank you, Lord, this morning. And then, God, we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, how you give us new breath every morning and then, Lord, every night. And then, God, we invite your Holy Spirit this morning, Lord, to come into this house, God, and stand the way, God, in this house, Father. And then, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, that you set down with some of these people this morning, Lord, and not go fresh from the time of the head down to the soles of her feet. And, Lord, without in the storehouse of the wheels of the mall, if you just come forth, you need to be blown, Father. Open up our spirit to hear, God, so we can understand this understanding lesson this morning, Father. Just pray I'll leave it so deep this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Mother Barnes, for the song and the Reverend Faithful for the um, prayer at this time. Um, as we prepare for a stressful week to come, that was Sunday School lesson today, <clears throat> the title and the important role. And, <clears throat> excuse me, but the key words, but we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. And it's wonderful to be called out of darkness into his marvelous light because we have an important role. And the, the most important role uh, this morning in the Sunday school is uh, the teacher of the hour, Trustee Nancy Wooten. Uh, Trustee Wooten is in your hand. Disappointed. 
And he goes on to tell us that he, he's very precious to you who believe. But to those who reject him, well, the same stone that was rejected by the builder has become the cornerstone, the most honored and important part of the building. He said, and the scripture also say, he is the stone that some would stumble over, and he's the rock that many will fall, that would make many fall. They would stumble because they would not listen to God's word, nor obey it. So this punishment must fall. They must fall. But he said, but you are not like that. For you have been chosen by God himself. You are priests of the king, and you are holy and pure. You are God's very own. All this, so all of this, so that you may show to others how God called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. And number th the last verse, he said, now, see, now, once you were nothing, you were less than nothing. Now you are God's own. Once you know little, once you didn't know much, you knew little about God's mercy. But now your very lives have been changed by God's mercy. And as we look at some of the, some of the main points in here, it says, um, uh, uh, Peter told him, said, you know, you're going to first have to have a change in direction. You're going to have to change the way you're doing some things. He was concerned about the persecution that were taking place to the Christians and how persecution were putting stress on the Christian community. And he told him, he said, now, you know, the way it is when a community is under pressure, so there's a tendency uh, to start arguing and bickering and creating division, and, and that makes the community more of a target to outside pressures. Now, Peter told him, said, now, get rid of those things that cause division. Say, so, you know, uh, <clears throat> don't just pretend to be good. Clean house. Do what you know you need to be doing. To so, make a clean sweep of all that malice and jealousy, all those things, because all they do, they, and all those things do, is just create division. And it should not be part of the life of a believer in Jesus Christ. He said, now Christians should not be returning to habits that was part of the old life. But they are to live a life of faith in Christ, which shows a different way to handle pressure. And that different way is dependent on God. He said, now, you know, just, just like a newborn baby needs to grow, you, you need to depend on God, even in tough times. He's worried because he knows that if enough pressure, if enough division come in the house of God, it's going to break up everything. It's, it's going to have a group over here, a group over there, a group over there. And then all of them are going to be so susceptible because they're not going to be so strong then they're going to be, then they're going to be, they're going to be just right. They're going to be just right. Oh. Oh. We know, we know. They will be able to, they won't be able to withstand all the stuff that, the, the outside world has. And so they would be a good target because they would attack that little group, then they would attack another little group, and the next thing you know, they would have the whole church in, divided into groups and whatever. So that's what uh, uh, he was saying. That's what uh, Peter was concerned about. And, and uh, <clears throat> he said, you know, and he said now when the church all they need to do is obey God. So they don't need, uh, um, they don't need to look nowhere else for other ways, for other source to sustain themselves during per, uh, persecution. He said, and they're not supposed to create their own little way of survival. God will provide what is necessary as needed, but they must depend on God. And Peter tells believers to remember and see the goodness of God. He said, 
his goodness should be a driving force. When you think about how good God had been to you, he was telling the believers, say, uh, uh, his, um, when you think about that, that, that should be a driving force. His goodness should be a driving force that will push believers past, that, past the things that divide the church. He said that, uh, he said that when you think about how good God's been to you, that ought to make you want to move forward. And the same thing with us. When we think of how good God's been to us, it makes us want to go ahead and move on. And see, he said the easy part of it is, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's just acknowledging God's goodness. So that's the easy part. But the difficult part, is in the action that is required. It said the difficult part is in the action that's required because of the goodness and the grace of God. And, and Peter tells him, said, now nah, there's work to be done. Peter tells him, Peter said, okay, now there's work to be done. So I've got to, <clears throat> I've got to continue feeding you milk since you are not mo not mature enough for the solid food, that there is jealousy and quarreling still among you. And, and, and you still, I'm going to have to nurture you to get you back on right track. Now, uh, and Jesus used the word stone or rock. He used that to describe how he would build a church. And this church will be able to withstand the attacks of evil forces. He said that first, they were to come together as a building in a spiritual house. And then he said, the church is to be united in message, mission, and purpose. Peter used the image of a building where all the stones in the stones, all the blocks in the building, they must work together to hold the building in place. And that is, that is just the way our church should operate. It takes all of us, and it takes all of us with a with a good mind to to build, to do what needs to be done. It takes all of us, and we need to be on one accord. That's basically what Peter was telling the people. He said, uh, um, he, he said the, the unity of the church will show the world what it means to be faithful to Christ and endure hardship." for the sake of the gospel. And then he told him, he said, now, you know, y'all are special people. He said, and the churches are told they have a special standing with God. Peter calls his community a chosen race. But the chosen race have responsibility, just like we do, the church. Then and now, the church has the responsibility of doing what pleases God. And you know, as we as we do look at this lesson, and we think about, and, and you know, think about what Peter was telling the people. He was telling them, and and that same thing applied to us. Just look at the world today. Just look at the whole situation. You know, with, you, with the first thing we have to do as a as a people, as a church, or the first thing we have to do is decide if we really want to be a part of God's family of believers. Do we really want to be that? Okay, if we do, then we got some changes to make. Amen. We, we got to get rid of those things that divide us, jealousy, envy, favoritism, pretense. And as we feed on the word and get off this milk, as, as said before, you know, we're going to have to come together. That's right. But we, many of us are still on milk. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not ready for solid food. And, um, the, and the saddest thing about it, we've been on this journey a long time, and we say we know the Lord and we serve the Lord and all that. Then why do we have such division in our churches? That should, be, right. the, should be the last place that we have division. That's right. And, and we, as we think about, as we look at, you know, we ought to be a body of believers that come together. And like I said, our mission, our, our ministry, everything, it should be united. We shouldn't be scattered 
with different ideas, even if we got different ideas, if we come together and maybe that idea won't work at this time, but it may work, your idea may work another time. We right. have to be on one accord so that we don't get blown out of proportion, that we don't get upset and angry in the house of the Lord. Mm-hmm. We have got, you know, if you're going to be part of God's family, then you have work for you to do. There's a responsibility for you to do it. And, you know, like I said before, for the, our mission, our message, and our purpose should all be united. We should be able to come together. And, and as Peter was telling the people in that church, in his, in his Christian community, he called, you, you just can't, you know, that's not going to get it. That's not going to get it. You do not need to be, you need to be united. You need to be come together on one accord. Yeah. And, and the church uh, represent, you know, the church represent God's people. And, mm-hmm. and it, should, it should be seen, and it should be seen in how they live, how they get along. When someone sees one of us, they should know, uh, as they said about the disciples, they have been with the Lord. Mm-hmm. They should see God in the way we live. That's and, right. And, and we, as a we as a church, we as a people, we we've got to we got some things got to change. We got to mm-hmm. change. Some things have to change. We have to get together. We have to. <laughs> First of all, like I said, we just, once we decide we want to be a part of God's family, then we all got to get on one accord. Yes. And, and we've got to sit there and, and, and whatever you have in mind, maybe your idea doesn't work well, but think about it. We have got to have a time when we can talk and nobody gets mad. Nobody walk away mad. You see... These are the things that Peter was telling the people, you got quarreling going on. You got all this, so that's dividing your church. He said, and then you get so divided that you, you know, you're sitting up for the for, for Satan to come in and the community to come in and attack you. But if you if you got enough numbers, there's strength in numbers. And if enough of you is saying, I'm going to hold on to God, regardless to what happens. Maybe I know I'm right, but maybe they, nobody accepts my idea, but that's all right. God knows about it. I'm going to just, but I'm going to hang in there. And, and you know, as the way the disciples and all have been persecuted and all that stuff, they kept right on hanging in there. And that's what Peter is tell, was telling them. That's what I see for us, too. We don't have some tough times. We're having tough times now. Mm-hmm. And it's going, and we might, it could get worse. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to try to hang in there and do what the Lord said. And the song that used to sing, if I down the battlefield, I'm out here on your word. That's and, right. And, and this is the way it is. All this stuff that Peter was telling them, it's the same thing for us. It's the same thing for us. You got to get on one accord. That's and we right. Got to, we got to be to a point that, okay, if I'm wrong, and you say, well, we can't use your idea, and it's wrong. Okay, that's fine. And then we move on to something else, because God got somebody else to, to do some work. But God wants us to grow together. He wants he want us to be able to, be able to talk together. He wants us to be looking out for each other. That's what the the Christian community is all about. Looking out for each other, seeing what we can do for each other. We are we are not to be mad with each other and have angry, jealousy, evil speaking about people. No, uh, Peter told us to get rid of all that stuff. And, and that's pretty much what, what uh, we have to do ourselves. And see, the, the church represents people and, and should be seen, like I said, in how we live. It, mm-hmm. the, the church not only belongs to God, but the church carries the authority to operate in the world on God's behalf as he represents it. He, the church is, uh, it, it's got the authority to, to do what God says. It's one of God's agents to operate in the world as a representative of God. And that's the way it should be. The church ought to 
be a place that when people can come and, and when they get there, they can, you know, they can have some peace. They can have some calm. They can get some understanding about some of the things that they are going through. But if the church is in an uproar and everything, ain't no need of nobody else coming there. That's right. That's because right. They're not going to get anything. Okay. And when they come there and they see that we're all up in an uproar about this and that, and then we, we have our meetings, then we get out and we talk about it, and we say, well, you know, this, yeah, I heard this, and I heard y'all this, that, 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 no, that just kill us. That kill our spirit, it kill our progress, and it mess with our relationship with God. Amen. Amen. We can't, we can't have that. We just got to get on one accord. And that's right. Say, that's what Peter tells them. Peter said, no, no, y'all got to, uh, uh, y'all got to change direction. So you got to change direction. You got to do things different. So if uh, the church is the what? It's the lighthouse that the world should look up to. Mm-hmm. And when, well, you know, when people are burdened, they say, well, now I'm going to go to church this morning. Well, if you want to church, you hope, you, you go to church because you, you're hoping you hear a word. That something will be said by someone that will guide you to say, even if you read, someone read the scripture and it was a part of you and, and, and something in that scripture that really touched you, you go home and you read it again. Well, you, you read that, you got something when you went to church. Even if it was just the scripture, you went home and read it again. You said, now, nah, Oh, I understand, kind of understand what it said. Then you read it over and over. Just like when I was in school, we had to learn the 23rd Psalm. So I've known it all my life, basically. And, and this is the way we have to do with the Word of God. And when mm-hmm. all this fails, we got to go to the Word and say, now look, the Word says this. And even if we thought we were right, we have to go by what the Word says. Amen. Mm-hmm. Um, I may have thought many things times that I was right, but when you look at the Word and just read the Word, meditate, ask God to show you what, you know, what it all means. Sometimes you read it, you move, you get away from it a little bit, you come back and read it again, and see like you find some more meaning in it. But the thing of it is, you got to, first of all, you got to turn to God, say, okay, for God, I'm going to leave. But God, I may die, but you gonna, but you don't have to get on on one accord with God and decide that if I'm gonna be a soldier in His army, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put on the uniform and I'm gonna march. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, and you say you once you do that, you got to study the word, you got to feed on. You see, it, right now at the at the stage of life that we're in and at the time that we're living in. We need solid food. We don't need milk. Mm-hmm. We, we, got, we got to get off milk. Milk won't do it now. But we need the solid food. Once we get the solid food, we need to eat the solid food. That's and, right. And we have to eat it. And then we have to, in that way, we can grow. To, we can grow to be great soldiers for Christ. And this is some of the things that Peter was telling them. And he said, so, you know, you, you get rid of that stuff. And you need a clean house and, and things that you were doing. Just, just get rid of because they ain't doing nothing but just hindering you. Amen. Get rid of those things that you've been having, been dealing with. Go, go ahead on and, and get rid of them because they ain't doing nothing but just keep holding you back. And That's you can, right. you, know, you don't need to be held back for so long. After a while, this journey is going to be over with. Mm-hmm. And when the journey is over with, there's nothing more we can do. We can't That's change it. We can't change and say, well, I, I should have done this. I'm going to do this. No, it's over. Whatever it is, for when, your, when your day is over with, there's nothing more you can do. And Peter would tell him, said, nine the times, said, get it right. Get straight. First of all, you get rid of those things that divide the church. If you could get rid of those first, then you could start dealing it. Mm-hmm. That's and, and so he was telling, he was telling all the people there, and, and you know, it's like some of them act like you know they things that they never heard, 
And maybe some other people in that time hadn't heard all that. But as Peter come through preaching and telling them, as he sent them letters, and just like Paul did, sent them letters and stuff, that y'all need to change. So you can't, you can't go on like this. The church of God has got to be strong. You see? Amen. And see, once you realize that Jesus is the cornerstone, he's the main stone, and all the rest of us are living stones. Mm-hmm. And we're building on the foundation of the cornerstone. Mm-hmm. And we thank God for him. But he's telling us, you know, all these people, he, he said, I'm not worried about the unbelievers because I know how they're going to be anyhow. He said, the unbelievers are not going to believe, and I'm going to be a stumbling block to them. And a lot will fall because they ain't going to believe no way. They're not even going to believe. They're not even going to bed either. He said, so therefore, they don't want to hear the word. So but I'm talking to y'all who claim to be Christian, who yes. said, who said that you are children of God. Said that y- y'all the one I'm, I- I'm talking to now. And let us get it together. He said, let us stay united in strength and, 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 and word, in deed, in our thought life. And he said, you know, if he said it's time to clean house. It is. It's time for it's time for all of us to clean house. Now this ain't nothing you can hire a cleaning crew to come in and do. This is something that you must consult with God and get God's here. And God, God used His chosen people to reflect His glory in the world. And no matter what, it's something that you got to do. And say, I always say every day, oh, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Because if I don't get those things, I'm not going to do right. And nobody else is going to do right. That's right. If you don't have the clean heart and the right spirit, you're not going to do right. That's right. And so this is one thing we can ask God every day to do that for us and help us because Whatever is going, we can't do nothing by ourselves. You know, we right. get that straight. And, and I don't care how you say, well, I'm going to change. Well, I'm going to do it. Well, make if your mind with God's help, you're going to change. Because a couple of days down the road, you'll be doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't control yourself. You can't handle it. you got to go through God and ask him to create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit in you. Because if you got those two things, you know, you're going to be act right. And, mm-hmm. and, you, and if you don't have them, you can't act right. You try That's to. Right. You try to, but you can't do it. No, 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 you can't do it. That's so right. You can't do it by yourself. You need him to do that. And that's why he's our foundation. The rest of us are living stone. But we all have to. He's the foundation, and we have to build off him. Mm-hmm. And so, and, 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 and you know, no matter what we do, somebody is looking at you. And they hear you all, you say, you say this and you say that and you, and you sing this and you sing that and you teach this and teach that. You preach this and preach that. But they're watching you. Amen. It's sad that they watch people instead of uh, reading the Word of God. But some people maybe have not even gotten to that point. They just kind of watch other people and see how they do because they, they've they been told they was Christians. And they just watch them. And some people even pattern their lives after other folks. So you have to be very careful, those of us who believe in Christ. We have to be very careful because we know somebody's reading us every day. Mm-hmm. We are somebody's book, that somebody's Bible that they are reading every day. Whether you whether you know it or not, but they, they, they watch you and, and they look and try to see how you do things. So you need to be on the up and up with God. So as we say, we remember, just remember, an ounce of practice is worth more than tons of preaching, teaching, or speaking. Amen. And no matter what, as we go along, we can look at our, look at where we are. But a change has got to come. Amen. Are there any comments? Yes, I am. I want to thank God for you this morning. And I want to thank you for that awesome lesson. And you can say, 
everybody need to get on one accord. And when we in the church, you don't have a few say what you want to believe. If 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 it got anything to do with the church, you are supposed to ask the whole body, not just a couple. Cause if one or two gonna do it, then they need. That's when you separate from the church. But when you have other objects, you want to in, invite the whole church. That's cause you want something to do. But what we got to do is learn to take self out of it and put God in the head of everything, not to do what I want you to do, but do what God will have you to do. And if you do what God will have you to do, everything will be okay. Amen. All right. That was a wonderful lesson, Sis Nancy. What I got out of it was, it doesn't matter what position you're holding in church, you still on that milk right now if you're not doing right. You still need uh-huh. to get something out of that word. So uh-huh. what I learned is if I'm a pastor, I'm a teacher, I'm a deacon, you know, I'm a choir member, I'm still on milk if I'm not doing right. That's right. what I learned. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you got to grow up something out because you, you can't say that. Amen. Are there any other comments? I thank God for for waking me up this morning, first of all. And I enjoyed the Sunday school lesson, what I heard. And it's true, we got to get on one accord, and we got to have it in our heart. Ask God to help us, help us to love each other. And once you uh, get that love in your heart, you don't, you don't be on one accord because he'll help you. Because if you don't, you're going to die and go to hell. Amen. 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 Chris Honeywood, I think you've done a very good job this morning teaching the Sunday school lesson. Thank you. Awesome, y'all. Awesome, y'all. I love you, Master, for that. Thank yes. you. Yes. 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 If, if, if even one person, only one person got somebody who wants to work that for them. Amen. Amen. Yeah, right. And such a woman, I don't always say anything, but I always, always enjoy your lesson. Hey, I'm a little bit forced yeah. right now because I've been dealing with my allergies, but believe me, I enjoy every single time whether I say anything or not. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, all the this is confidence, you know. I, you know, as I work hard with it during the week, I, I try to tell myself it's not going to be in vain. Somebody's going to get something. Amen. Yeah. Oh. I do. Yeah. I get something out of it, man. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to it. Amen. Oh. Mm-hmm. I thank God, and I'm, I thank God that I'm still able to do it. Amen, too. Amen, too. Now, pray that God continue to let you be able to do it. Amen. Amen. Are there any other comments? If there are not any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school Amen. Amen. Thank you, Trustee Wooten. Uh, you're wonderful. Uh, as I was sitting here and listening to the lesson, I was thinking as uh, say, you know, it takes a lot to pull the lesson together, and you can tell by your presentation and what you're giving that you have taken the time. And, you know, even in the intro of the lesson today, um, it says, that first paragraph, it says, buildings are made out of many different kinds of materials. Some are made of brick, 
Uh, there's concrete and steel, steel others, wood and synthetic material. Whatever material they are made from, they must rest upon a strong foundation for structural soundness. Oh. In other words, the foundation is built upon a large stone known as a cornerstone. The stone is the strongest of all other materials that are used in the construction of the building because it supports everything that is built upon it. So I say that to say that it is evident through your through your study and through your presentation that you are building on a solid foundation. And when you build on the solid foundation, everything else that's built there upon will stand. So we thank God for you today. Are there any other um Comments or remarks, or anyone like to share anything that you see on the left today? Amen. Amen. Uh, just a minute. If you have the uh, minutes, uh, don't want to uh, uh, overstep you. If you have the minutes, you may uh, share with us the minutes. If you do not, uh, we'll pull somebody else. But we have 12 in the sanctuary. And there were uh, 10 online. Reverend Lewis, I was late getting started this morning, so I don't have any minutes. Okay. Okay, we have some money in the house that was, that was um, taken back up. That was all right. So, Sister Lewis. Huh? Thank you again, uh, 